found out we're probably going to run a few minutes over time. Does that bother anybody? Oh, 
just sweetly obey my will. from which I came. This tune uh, was actually at one point the only uh, extant recording I had of my mother as a gospel singer. Uh, and it's about going back and remembering both the external and the internal events of our lives. It's called Precious Memory. Peace. 
Thank you. And you thought you are going to get away with a Sunday morning without a moral, didn't you? <laughs> Not a chance. Precious memories. This is uh, one of my precious memories, actually. It's a little poem. No, it's a big poem. I learned when I was all, all of four or five years old, standing in the front of the congregation, trying to recite this with my mother whispering the lines to me from the back pew. <laughs> After I got over that intense humiliation, my mother told me that her mother had done the same to her, so she had to pass it on. I noticed at that moment my great-grandmother chuckling in the corner, and she said, I did it to your grandmother too. So, this is a poem by that great American poet, Anonymous, <laughs> entitled, St. Peter at the Gate. St. Peter sat at the Golden Gate with a solemn face and an air sedate. And at the top of the golden stair, a man and a woman ascended there, applied for admission, and came and stood before St. Peter, grand and good. The woman was tall and lean and thin, with determination written across her chin. The man was uh, short and sick and stout. <laughs> His stomach was shaped, so it rounded out. <laughs> His face was pleasant, and all the while he wore a kindly, gentle smile. The choir in the distance, an echo awoke, and the man stood still while the woman spoke. Oh, thou who guardest the golden gate, we came hither beseeching thee to let us enter the heavenly land and play our harps with the angel band. <laughs> of me, St. Peter, there is no doubt. There is nothing in heaven that could bar me out. Why, I've been to meetings three times a week, and almost always I'd arise to speak. I've told sinners about the days they'd have to repent for their sinful ways. I've told my neighbors, I've told them all of Adam and Eve and the primal fall. I've told them just what they had to do to pass through with the chosen few. I've talked and I've talked loud and long for my lungs are good and my voice is strong. So St. Peter, you can clearly see the gates of heaven are already open to me. But of my old man, I regret to say he hasn't exactly walked in the narrow way. He smokes and swears great faults he's got. I don't know if he'll pass or not. But dear St. Peter, I love him so, so for my sake you can let him go. Oh, oh I know my grim gospel is so that the unrepenter must fry below. But Good St. Peter, <laughs> can't you see some way you can let him in for me? Um, and uh, dear St. Peter, seems to me this gate ain't kept as it ought to be. <laughs> and you should be standing in the opening over there instead of sitting here in an easy chair. And good St. Peter, my side is dim but I don't like the way your mustache is trimmed. <laughs> Why, it's all cut wide and sideways tossed. It would look much better narrow and straight across. <laughs> well, we'll go now our crowns to win. So open up, St. Peter, and let us in. St. <laughs> Peter stroked his golden staff, and in spite of his position, <coughs> he almost laughed. Then with a fiery gleam in his eye, he said, who's keeping this gate, woman? You or I? <laughs> St. Peter stood serene and tall and pressed a button upon the wall and said to the imp that answered the bell, imp, escort this woman around you. Well, the man stood still, as still as a stone, sadly, solemnly alone. 
all his life a subtle idea he'd had that his wife was good and he was bad. St. Peter stood with head bowed low. Smoking and swearing is bad, I know. But 30 years with that woman there, no wonder, man, you have no hair. <laughs> Gabriel, give this man a seat alone, one with a cushion up by the throne, and see that on the finest ambrosia he feeds, because this man has had all the hell he needs. <laughs> The man entered the golden gate, <laughs> rejoicing to be free of his mate. He smiled as he looked around and said, this is more happiness than I've ever found. And so, the scriptures have come to pass that the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. to conclude with uh, what seems to be everybody's favorite. We certainly not only hope that you will, but expect you to sing along. Yeah, it's time for When the Saints Go Marching In.